Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing the structure and function of the cardiac conduction system, sometimes called the electrical conduction system of the heart. The first thing I want to mention is that the heart does not require nervous system innervation to beat. It is autorhythmic. Now, if you compare that to skeletal muscle, uh, if you take the nerve that innervates a muscle and you lesion it, that muscle will no longer contract. Okay? Unlike that, the heart does not require nervous system innervation to beat. But for example, if you take the heart and remove it from the body, assuming that it has a blood supply and somehow you're keeping it alive, okay, it will still beat despite not being connected to your central or peripheral nervous system. Okay? It's what we call autorhythmic, meaning it has intrinsic cells that are able to generate all the action potentials that it needs. Understand that it can be modulated by the nervous system. So for example, your sympathetic nervous system can cause the heart to beat faster, but it itself does not require the nervous system to actually have a beat. Some parts of the nervous system can modulate the beat. Okay? And within the heart, we have these cells that are arranged in a certain way that allow the atria to contract first and then the ventricles. And these are the cells of the cardiac conduction system. Okay? Uh, these specialized cells, which are purely electrical, they are non-contractile. All they're responsible for doing is sending action potentials, really starting from the right atrium and spreading them throughout the left atrium and the ventricles. So they initiate and conduct an electrical current called an action potential. Okay? And they do this by depolarizing sequentially, starting here all the way down to the apex of the heart. And we'll see that in just a couple minutes. Now, for an undergraduate anatomy class, these are generally the five regions of the conductive system that you're going to hear about. On the next slide, we'll look at a few others. But those are the SA node, which is sinoatrial node. You can see that right here. It's actually located in the wall of the right atrium. Then we have the AV node, or atrioventricular node. That's here on this diagram number three. Uh, the AV node is named because it's really on the border between the atria and the ventricles. That makes sense. Then we have the AV bundle, sometimes called the bundle of Hiss. And then there's left and right bundle branches. The left branch goes to the left ventricle, the right branch goes to the right ventricle, and then long Purkinje fibers. And it occurs in this order. And in a normal individual so who's completely healthy, the SA node is the pacemaker of the heart, meaning the SA node sets the rate of depolarizations. If the SA node fails, then the AV node would take over. Okay, so it's kind of like president, vice president, I think speaker of the house is next. If something happens to the president, the vice president takes over. If something happens to them, speaker of the house, and so on and so forth. So normally the SA node will be the pacemaker. It'll set the rate of depolarizations, which therefore sets the heart rate at, at baseline. But if the SA node fails, then the AV node will then take over, and so on and so forth. That's obviously not a good thing, and we'd like to avoid that. But here's the general structure of the cardiac conduction system. Okay? And before we get into this, I want to just show you real quick how the heart overlays with this. Okay, so here's the SA node right here. And you can see here, this is the atrioventricular node, kind of at the cusp between the atria and the ventricles. And it'll allow these depolarizations to travel into the ventricles. And you can again see how this arrangement's set up. And if you look very carefully, you'll actually see the atria contract a split second before the ventricles. And that's because, as we'll see, the action potentials are generated first in this region in the atria, and then they'll spread to the ventricles. All right, so the normal pacemaker of the heart is this one, number one. It's the sinoatrial node. Now, the sinoatrial node is located in the wall of the right atrium. So the very first part of the heart to contract is the right atrium. Next will be the left atrium. We'll talk about that in just a second. But notice that the sinoatrial node has several branches, and these branches just allow different regions of the right atrium to contract. So we have one right here. Okay? We have another one right here. 
there's another right here, and these all pretty much are just allowing the right atrium to contract, different regions of the right atrium. There's also a branch that separates and goes out to the left atrium, and this over here is called Bachmann's Bundle. Bachmann's Bundle allows the left atrium to contract, okay? But notice that Bachmann's Bundle is a terminal branch. It doesn't connect back up over here at the AV node. All right. Once it, the action potentials go here, that's it. They just cause the left atrium to contract. However, as they're going through the regions in the right atrium, they'll eventually converge at this node right here, number two, which is called the atrioventricular node or AV node. And as we mentioned, it's right on the cusp between the atria and the ventricles. Okay. Now, at the AV node, there's a delay. It's called the AV delay. Now, remember I mentioned that the atria always contract before the ventricles, and that's not just a random thing, they have to. If you go back and think about cardiac physiology, the flow of blood through the chambers, remember that the atria have to pump their blood into the ventricles. So there's a time when it's passively moving from the atria to the ventricles, and then right at the end of that, the atria will contract to squeeze the last bit of blood into the corresponding ventricle. If the ventricles were to prematurely contract, they wouldn't be fully filled with blood from the atria. And so the efficiency of the heart therefore goes down in that case. So we have to have this delay here. And this delay prevents action potentials from moving into the ventricles. Okay? Why is that necessary initially? Because we want the atria to finish contracting before we ever let the ventricles have a chance of contracting. Again, if the ventricles were to contract prematurely, then the amount of blood they pump is a lot lower, the cardiac output's a lot lower, and the efficiency is lower. So we have this delay. But once the atria have finished contracting, the delay is stopped, and the depolarizations move from the atrioventricular node into this region right here called the Hiss bundle, sometimes called the bundle of Hiss. The bundle of Hiss really serves as the entry point into the ventricles, and very quickly you have branches that come off of it. Um, and these are really just the left and right bundle branches. Okay? Now again, we're looking at the anterior view, so this is the patient's perspective. So over here is the left ventricle, and over here is the right ventricle. Okay? So over here, when the bundle of Hiss, or Hiss bundle, uh, separates or bifurcates, this branch over here is termed the right bundle branch, and this one over here is the left bundle branch. So these are just generally called the bundle branches. Let's first take a look at the right bundle branch. So we follow it over here, and we just see that it's going to have some branches that come off. Okay, uh, These branches right here are called Purkinje fibers, and they just allow parts of the ventricle to contract. So for example, this region over here of the ventricle near the apex will contract before this part, which will contract before this part, which will contract before this part, and so when the ventricle contracts, since this part is contracting first, it squeezes up like a tube of toothpaste, because blood from the right ventricle is going to have to be pumped up out the pulmonary trunk. Okay. We're going to see something similar on the left side. Here's the left bundle branch, and you can see it has a lot of these branches that come off. Here's the left posterior bundle. The left side is going to have a lot more of these branches that come off because the left ventricle has a lot more myocardium. Much thicker, much stronger, so therefore it requires more electrical stimulation. So this left posterior bundle really just ensures that you have a lot more electrical activity going to the left ventricle. But again, it wraps around here, and you have all of these Purkinje fibers. So the Purkinje fibers near the apex are going to, con are going to uh, depolarize first. So this region is going to contract first, and the contraction is going to spread upward, just like we saw in the right ventricle. Why does that make sense? Because you're having to squeeze blood up out the aorta. Okay, remember, the aorta is at the top here. And so, again, the apex part of the myocardium is going to have to contract first to squeeze that blood up. And you can kind of see that here. If you look, you can see that blood would be moved from the apex up toward that aorta. So hopefully that makes sense. And hopefully the cardiac conduction system makes sense to you. So we looked at the structure here and the reason why we have it. In the next video, we're going to talk about 
the pacemaker potential, which is really just the action potential that's generated by the sinoatrial node. And this is the action potential that's eventually going to spread into the muscle cells. That will be two videos from now. So join us in the next video. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.